Hello, my dear students. Welcome to another one important session uh, to the Chemplex. Okay, and today we're going to discuss about motion and time. Uh, chapter 13 of class 7 uh, CBSE. Okay, so if anyone is interested to watch this video, they can much more uh, interesting and also you will get an idea about what is motion which are the different types of motion how time is measured how what is mean by speed how this time is related to motion and everything okay so without wasting much time we are directly moving to this and before that let me tell you something this is for tame to cbsc exam okay this is for tame to the first chapter in science okay so let's move on Ah, before uh, going to the slide, I just want to recollect what all are the things that you studied in class 6. In class 6, there is also a chapter called motion. And uh, I'm ju I just collected one of the activity from that 6th class, okay, about motion. So here you can find a bunch of uh, objects here. A school bag, a mosquito a table people sitting on chairs or people moving about a butterfly a dog a cow your hands a small baby a fish in water a house a factory a piece of stone a horse a ball a bat a moving train a saving machine a wall clock or the hands of a clock the task is you have to classify these objects into the objects which are at the stationary and the object which are in motion. Stationary means nothing but object at rest. Simply they are sitting there. Object in motion then means the objects that are moving. Okay. So this is the task. that uh, This task is for just recollecting what all other things that you studied in your previous class. Okay. So let's go on. Right. So moving things around us you are going to find out which are the moving things around you okay so here a school bag okay think about a school bag it is in rest or in motion of course it is in rest right so a school bag you can write it here school bag school bag similarly you have to complete it okay then a mosquito, think about a mosquito, what is he doing? Ah, right, he is wandering, right? He is moving to collect the black, right? So it is object in motion, mosquito, mosquito, right? Then a table, table, you think about a table which is at the corner of a room. It is rest or it is stationary, right? So a table, it is object at rest. Then uh, people sitting on chairs people sitting on chairs they are not moving right people sitting on chair chair on chair so this is uh, at rest and people moving about they are moving it is written so it is at motion okay now again think about a butterfly what is a butterfly doing butterfly is flying right so it is stationary or uh, in motion of course this is in motion a dog also a dog is in motion because dog may go here and there right a cow a grazing cow it is moving right your hands of course i'm writing this because so my hands are moving a small baby think about a small baby he is always playing crying what all are the things that you're doing no idea so small baby it is in a stage of motion a fish in water Think about an aquarium what a fish is doing there she is wandering here and there right so that is also a state in motion a house where is your house your house is such a such a place right it is stationary it is not moving so it is at rest a factory where is that factory it is also in rest a piece of stone a piece of stone is lying there so it is at rest you got it the point right Again, a horse, a horse, a living thing, living thing, a horse is a living being, right? So, living being means means it is moving here and there. So, horse is in motion. A ball, 
a ball cricket ball or ball it is stationary right object at rest a bat if it is a cricket bat it is stationary or if it is a bat that bat no um, bird bat it is motion a moving train moving is there of course it is in motion state of motion a sewing machine if it is used for some sewing purpose then it is in motion simply if it is a sewing machine then it is a trust okay so now it is trust a wall clock or the hands of a clock if it is a wall clock this wall clock is simply placed over the wall so it is at rest and the hands of a clock think about the hand of hands of a clock it is always moving it according to the second or minute or hour right so it is in a state of motion so you know guys now what are the things that are in motion and what are the things that are in rest okay you got the point right so moving to the next slide that detailedly give you the idea about what you mean by a body in motion and what you mean by a body in rest so a body is in a state of rest if it does not change its position with respect to time if a body does not change its time does not change its position no change in its position with respect to time then it is at rest no change in position with respect to time no change in position no change in position means with respect to time means at rest no change in position with respect to with respect to time then it is at rest r e s t then if it if it changes its position with respect to time then it is in motion a body is said to be in motion when it changes its position with respect to time okay so you got the idea right so moving on so that is the different types of motion that we discussed now when a body is moving in a straight line path if a body is moving in a straight line path then that is called a straight line motion or rectilinear motion the straight line motion can be also called as a rectilinear motion rectilinear motion example a calling coin falling from a building or a sprinter running in a 300 meter race they are example for straight line motion or rectilinear motion okay now when an object is follow flow following a circular path of motion that we already discussed you know circular path of motion it is called a circular motion okay when an object moves to and fro okay underline the word moves to and fro from a mean or constant position or repeats the motion then it can be called as periodic motion example a pendulum or a race car taking laps of a circuit so these are other examples of types of motion so which are the three different types of motion rectilinear motion or straight line motion circular motion and uh, and periodic motion so that we already discussed now we are moving to see what is the difference between a slow motion and fast motion okay you already know you already experienced about the slow motion and fast motion okay an object which takes a long time to cover a certain distance if it is known as slow motion long time long time to cover a distance a to be suppose this is the distance starting from initial position is a and the final position is b if it took long time for example if it takes uh, 10 minute to uh, 10 hour to complete 10 hour to complete this short distance 10 hour to take this complete the short distance from a to b and if another one boy boy this is plan a okay a boy take 10 hour to cover this distance from a to b and another one boy who took only 10 minute to cover the same distance a to b which one is slow which boy is slow boy a or boy b boy a is slow right and boy b is fast that is the thing b boy b is fast boy a is slow so an object which takes a long time to cover a certain distance is not as slow while the other object which takes shorter time to cover the same distance is not as fast for example 
if your school is at a distance of 5 km suppose your school is at a distance of 5 km from your home and you want to go to school by bicycle okay you are using bicycle it may takes 25 minute to reach the school and if you go to the school by school bus you are using a school bus then the same distance can be covered only by 10 minute so which one is fast going by school bus or going by bicycle yeah going by school bus is fast right school bus is fast because it takes much less time only 20 10 minutes to cover up the distance but if you are using bicycle it takes 25 minute to cover up the distance so which one is fast school bus by catching a school bus is much easier for getting to the school at 10 minutes okay within 10 minutes you will reach the school that means it means that bicycle takes a longer time than the bus that's the most convenient way to determine which of the two object moving faster is to compare the distance comparing the distance moved by them in a unit speed which is known as speed unit time it is unit time unit time unit time which is known as speed okay so speed actually what is the speed speed means we already know you already heard a lot about speed so what is the speed or how you can define the speed speed means the distance traveled by an object per unit time very 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 important the distance traveled by an object per unit time is known as speed distance traveled speed is equal to distance traveled by unit time this time can either be second minute or even hour okay so a slow moving object is said to have a low speed and fast moving object is said to have high speed you already know that right so speed is equal to distance traveled by time taken for example if a car travels is distance of 100 km so what is the distance traveled they are going to find out the speed so it is given that the distance traveled is 100 km 100 km divided by time taken what is the time taken if a car travels a distance of 100 km in 2 hour so 2 hour is the time taken so 100 by 2 what is 100 by 2 100 by 2 is equal to 50 so the speed is 50 km per hour 50 km per hour you got the point right so speed is what is speed speed is equal to distance traveled by unit time distance traveled by unit time is equal to speed okay the next portion is non uniform and uniform motion so what do you mean by uniform in your school you are wearing uniform what is your why you are wearing uniform ah it is an identity right everyone got same identity that means same same okay same so here uniform motion means ha huh. that means you know that at a particular distance okay suppose this is a distance curve from starting from a to b okay and if a car moves this suppose this is a car okay a car is moving okay car is moving through the road and if it covers 5 meter in first 5 second again in the next 5 second again it is moving 5 meter then 5 plus 5 10 meter again in the next 5 second it moves 10 plus 5 15 meter that means it is for the first the first 5 second it is covered 5 meter then the next 5 second means 10 second it covered 10 meter and the next 5 second that means 15 second it covers 15 meter that means uniform in each and every 5 second it covers 5 meter it means for each and every 5 second for each and every 5 second for each and every 5 second it covers a distance of 5 meter here you can see 5 second 5 meter for each and every so this is uniform same uniform motion uniform motion okay listen here in every day life we seldom find objects moving with a constant 
extend the speed over long distance for a long duration of time or for long duration if the speed of an object moving along a straight line beeps changing its motion is called non uniform motion if the speed is changing then it can be called as non uniform motion on the other hand an object moving along a straight line with a constant speed then it is called uniform motion constant speed or same speed it is same speed then it is called a uniform motion in this case the average speed is same as the actual speed its actual speed and average speed are same so that is what is called the non uniform motion non uniform means motion means for the first for example i am illustrating for the first 5 second it covers 10 meter okay next for the next 5 second it covers 15 meter and for the next 5 second it covers 20 meter so here you can find for the first 5 second it covers 10 meter for the next 5 second that is in 10 second it covers 10 plus 15 25 meter and for the next 5 second that is 15 second it will cover 25 plus 20 45 meter there you cannot find any uniformity right so such a type of motion can be called as non uniform motion non uniform motion so two type of motions are there uniform motion and non uniform motion that is according to the speed if it possesses a constant speed then it is uniform motion if it possesses constant speed then it is uniform motion constant speed then it is uniform motion and if it is not constant or uh, uh, the speed beeps changing speed is changing then it is non uniform motion clear now next we are going to see about the units of speed so the unit of speed depends upon the unit of distance and the unit of time suppose the distance you are going to measure the distance in meter okay unit of distance is meter and the unit of time is in second you know that speed is equal to distance divided by time distance traveled divided by time taken distance traveled divided by time taken so the unit will be like this distance is in meter so meter divided by time is in second so meter per second will be the unit of speed in that case unit of speed is equal to meter per second okay suppose you are traveling for a long duration that means uh, the time taken is in hour time taken is in hour and the distance is 400 km you have or 40 km you have traveled then you can see that as the speed is equal to speed is equal to distance divided by time and you can you will get the unit as distance is in 4 km right 40 km km divided by hour how the so the unit is km per hour okay so the meter is the standard unit of distance and second is the standard unit of time so the standard unit of speed is underlined where standard unit of speed is meter per second standard unit is meter per second Again, the large value of speed are expressed in kilometer per hour. The small value of speed are expressed in centimeter per second, and in this case, the distance traveled is measured in terms of centimeter, and the time taken is measured in second second. Okay, so I hope you all got the idea of unit of speed. Now we are going to see the types of speed. You know that uniform speed, non-uniform speed. You already know that. now average speed is the total distance traveled by an object divided by the total time taken by the object is called average speed and another one speed called average speed average speed average speed is equal to the total distance traveled total distance traveled total distance traveled divided by total time taken total time taken which is called average speed so you have to study all those things okay moving to this is a pictorial representation or diagrammatic representation i have just included here because uh, for getting you idea how to calculate for the um, problems or the for the calculation process okay you will get some problems no so if you are getting if you want to find out the speed you're going to in the question it is given that you have to find out the speed 
or in the question it is given that you have to find out the distance covered and the speed and time is given or suppose you have to find out the time and the speed and distance is given suppose so in such a question you can use this diagram okay you have to draw it a triangle and in the triangle you have to divide this triangle into three equal halves and in the first half you have to draw d here that is representing distance okay this one is d representing distance and then the second half you have to write s s for speed and for the third half you have to write t t for time okay if d and t is given you can find s if d and s is given you can find t if s and t is given you can find d that is the use of this triangle how you can find if d and t is given you know that speed is equal to distance divided by so here here you just draw one d here write a d here underline then t that is d by t d by t suppose you have to find out d distance then here it is given that s bar t you know s bar t that means s into t again you have to find out t here it is like the d by s that is distance divided by speed this is how finding speed time and distance average speed that we already discussed total distance divided by total time okay so this is a what you have to do now is you have to draw this triangle one or two through two or three times and then you have to practice how you can calculate speed distance and time okay if you know distance and time then speed is equal to distance by time if you know speed and time then distance is equal to speed into time if you know distance and the speed then time is equal to distance divided by speed okay you have to study this moving on about time okay i'm not stopping i'm just continuing this is just an idea about the chapter okay briefing the chapter so there are many way events in nature that repeats after a time interval that morning rising of a sun again in the next morning sun is rising again in the next morning sun is rising so day and night the time between sunrise and sunset can be called as day monday wednesday thursday tuesday friday so again day again night night means sunset to two, next sunrise then month means time between two new moons two new moons that is can be called as month january september january february march april year the time the earth takes to complete one revolution around the sun is called a year one year is equal to 364 days right okay now time measuring devices or clocks so these are the clocks you know you know in our uh, daily life we are uh, how important the clock is how important our digital watch is how important the watch is you all know that so clock use the concept of periodic motion to measure time so what do you mean by periodic motion the to and from motion is called the periodic motion so clocks uses the concept of periodic motion to measure time it means that it uses motion that repeats itself in equal amount of time repeats itself that is what is called periodic motion repeats itself in equal amount of time or regular interval of time regular interval of time interval of time so that means one o'clock one o'clock okay so pendulum ranks on one o'clock one then at two o'clock again that means again after one hour it the pendulum ranks two times three o'clock again after one hour the pendulum ranks three times okay so that means it is repeating in regular interval of time there are different types of time measuring devices period temp, temp, pendulum clock is on the one example and now we are going to study about the periodic motion of simple pendulum okay what do you mean by a simple pendulum now you're going to study what do you mean by a simple pendulum 
So a simple pendulum contains a bob. I will show you in the next slide. It is a metallic bob. So this is actually the metallic bob. Symbol pendulum I am drawing. This is the bob. Okay, this is actually what is called bob. B O B bob. It is a metallic ball or stone which is suspended from a rigid stand. So this one is a rigid stand. Suspended, suspended from a rigid stand with the help of a thread. So this one is called a thread. And this metallic ball can be called as bob. This is stand, a rigid stand. Okay. Oscillatory motion. Oscillatory motion means the to and from motion. The bob will comes to this area and then again it repeats to this area. So this movement is called oscillatory motion. Okay, oscillatory motion. That is the to and from motion. Okay, this is position A and this is position B. So the to and from motion of the pendulum is called oscillatory motion. The bob of the pendulum does move from the center. This is the center. That is can be called as mean position. The center can be called as mean position. And A and B called extreme ends. Extreme ends. Extreme ends. Okay, oscillation means when the bob moves from its center, that is mean position to its extreme end, it is said to be complete one oscillation. So one oscillation means starting from here, Starting from here, it travels to this extreme position. Then again, it comes to the center, that is mean position. Again, it comes to the next interval, next extreme end, and again it comes to the uh, starting position or the mean position. This you can call it as one oscillation. Simply you can draw like this. Okay, this is the mean position. Suppose this is one extreme end. Then it again comes to the mean position. Then again goes to the next extreme position. Again comes to the mean position. This particular one graph can be called as one oscillation. One oscillation. Okay. One oscillation. Time period of a pendulum. Time period means, what do you mean by time period? The time taken by the pendulum bob to complete one oscillation. The time taken by this time. How many time it took? And this time can be called as time period. What is called? Time period. What do you mean by time period? Pi, time period is the time taken by the pendulum bob to complete one oscillation is called a time period. Okay. So you can see here this one is a simple pendulum. This is the rigid stand here. Rigid stand here. And this is our uh, thread. And this is our bob that is a metallic ball. This is one extreme position B. This is another one extreme position B. This is the mean position or the center position. Okay. So this is a simple pendulum. This is the motion of a simple pendulum. Now units to measure the time speed. Okay. And okay. Next about units to measure time speed. Okay. Do you, next we are going to study about the units to measure time speed. So you already know that the different units of times are seconds, minutes, hours, right? And for the speed, you know, the calculating uh, the equation to find out the speed is distance divided by time. And the speed can be measured by unit meter per second, meter per minute, kilometer per hour, etc. That we already discussed in the previous slides. And here, what we are going to do in this slide is it is very, 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 very important. How you can convert meter per second and kilometer per hour or if in your question paper, uh, suppose the question is, it is given that the speed of a speed of a car is speed of a car is 40 kilometer per hour. It is given that the speed of the car is 40 kilometer per hour and the distance traveled by the distance traveled by the car is distance traveled by the car is is equal to 30 meter okay 30 meter okay 30 meter so calculate the time calculate the time calculate the time suppose you will get this type of question suppose you're getting this type of question how you can solve that means 
very very important all of you please listen here speed of a car it is given it in kilometer per hour okay the unit here is kilometer per hour and the distance it is given that it is in meter okay so you know that speed is equal to distance divided by time here it is given and calculate the time so time is equal to distance divided by speed so if you want to do the problem distance and speed will be of same unit here the distance it is in meter and speed it is in kilometer per hour it is not possible to cancel any one of them okay so if if the speed is in meter and the kilo, speed if the speed is in meter per second and also the distance is in meter then you can find the time is equal to distance divided by speed is equal to distance is in meter divided by meter per second so this meter and meter gets cancel and the time you will get the unit is in second okay this one is the actual method but it is given in this question it is that the speed is in kilometer per hour the unit of speed is in kilometer per hour and the distance traveled in meter so you have to convert this into either you have to convert this kilometer per hour into meter per hour or this meter to kilometer otherwise you cannot do this problem so in order to do this type of problems this conversion you have to study so what is this conversion 1 kilometer divided by 1 hour you know that 1 kilometer is equal to 1000 meter divided by 1 hour 1 hour is equal to 60 minute so 1000 meter divided by 60 minute or either you can write 1000 meter divided by 3600 so here you will get meter per second if the question is in kilometer per hour here the speed it is in 40 kilometer per hour you are going to ca calculate you are going to convert this 40 kilometer per hour into meter per second how by multiplying it with 1 by 3.6 so 40 into 1 by 3.6 or simply 40 divided by 3.6 if you are dividing 40 divided by 3.6 you will get it into meter per second so how can you convert kilometer per hour into meter per second kilometer per hour into meter per second can be converted by dividing by 3.6 similarly if you want to convert meter per second to kilometer per hour back you have to multiply it with 3.6 so you have to study this one okay so i think you all got the idea the next where well, you are going to do some of the problems you will get this idea much better now speedometer and odometer are the two different um, measuring devices speedometer is for device which is used to, to measure the speed of a particular car or a truck or a vehicle in uh, kilometer per hour so speedometer to measure the speed in kilometer per hour measure the speed in kilometer per hour what is odometer odometer is a device which measures the distance traveled by a vehicle in meter or kilometer it odometer measures the distance traveled speedometer speed odometer distance traveled this distance traveled can be either in kilometer or in meter speed in kilometer per hour speed in kilometer per hour okay so these are the two instruments or two devices that you can use that is speedometer and odometer odometer to measure the distance traveled and speedometer to measure the speed Okay and the last portion of this chapter is how to draw a distance time graph how to con how to construct a distance time graph what do you mean by a distance time graph from the distance time graph what are all the things that you got okay so distance time graph is simply a graph graph means a diagrammatic representation diagrammatic representation into uh, using analysis analysis analytical representation so a graph which represents the distance traveled by an object with respect to the time is called a distance traveled graph distance time graph it should possess distance traveled by an object and in a particular time then you will get distance time graph how you can construct a distance time graph making a distance time graph how you are going to make a distance time graph so here you can find that this one is a graph okay you can buy this graph paper from the uh, shop okay so this this the graph there you can mark the x axis and y axis 
x axis means the horizontal lines can be called as x axis and the vertical lines can be called as y axis okay so make the x axis and y axis mark the x axis and y axis and divide them in equal quantities so if this one is the first turn then you are taking only this one okay if you are taking both of this one then you have to take both of this one if you are taking this four equal halves then you should take this four equal halves okay okay here this one is the x and this one is the y A horizontal line x vertical line y choose one scale to represent the distance that is x axis to represent this distance you have to choose x axis if suppose x axis is distance distance is in meter or kilometer y axis that is time in minute okay in minute so you have choose this this is you are going to construct here up to 5 here up to 5 division okay okay so everyone got the idea right again i'm repeating it once more all of you please listen here oh okay if you are choosing y axis as the distance or if you are choosing x axis as the distance whatever it be for the time being here y axis represents the horizontal line and x axis represents the vertical line so here in the vertical line you are taking distance and in the horizontal line you are taking time okay in the vertical line you are taking the distance it is in the y axis according to this graph and time which is in the x axis x axis is the horizontal line and y axis is the vertical line okay so everyone got the idea right so this one is the thing the distance which is in kilometer that is taken in the y axis that is the vertical line and time in minutes that is taken in the x axis that is in the horizontal line so here you can find five equal halves one two three four five again here one two three four five, five equal halves mark the values of time and distance in the graph again mark the set of values of time taken and distance covered in that time by the object in the graph for example if one kilometer is covered in one minute then mark one unit on both this. one kilometer in one minute if it cover one kilometer that means one kilometer if it covers one kilometer in one minute you have to mark this point okay again the two minute it covers two kilometer then you have to mark this point and again in three kilometer three minute it covers three kilometer then you have to mark this point then you have to draw the straight line if this is a straight line then it will be an uniform motion you already know about what you mean by uniform motion right so one kilometer in one minute again in the next one minute it covers one kilometer again in the next one minute it covers one millimeter one kilometer that means it is it gives a straight line if it is a straight line then it is in uniform motion now draw a line parallel to x-axis and y-axis i already drawn mark the points where these lines intersect okay mark the points already marked the points okay then now join all the points of the intersection so now we already joining the points of intersection so this is the distance time graph this is the distance time of the moving object and if the shape of the graph is straight line the object has uniform or constant speed if it is parallel to the x-axis like this if you are parallel to the x-axis okay so here this is the x-axis x-axis means time as the time moves 1 minute 2 minute 3 minute in 1 minute it covers this is suppose this is 3 kilometer okay in 1 minute it covers the distance 3 kilometer in 2 minute it covers the distance of 3 kilometer 3 minute it covers the distance of 3 kilometer that means the car is at rest you know so it is a stationary object okay and here another one shape of the graph it is like that this one okay shape of the graph is the shape of the graph is curve 
okay that means for the 1 minute it covers a distance of 1 km 2 minute it covers a distance of 3 km and 3 minute it covers a distance of 2.5 km and so on so it has a non uniform speed so you have to study from the shape of the graph you will get an idea about which type of speed it possesses it is a uniform motion or a uniform speed or non uniform speed or whether it is a stationary object so from this graph how you will get the idea this is fast steady steady speed so this is uniform motion here steady speed is there this is uniform up to here it is uniform then it is parallel to the x axis right so this is in stationary motion and again it is returning to the starting position okay speed is decreasing this is non uniform speed this is a graph of non uniform speed so everyone got the point i think now to find the speed of the distance time graph so that you can find another one thing called slope if this one is the u uniform speed then you can find the slope this one is called slope slope here it is the time graph no it is the distance time distance axis and this is the time axis so here this vertical line represents the distance okay distance this horizontal line represents the time and speed is equal to you already know that distance divided by time so you already know that distance divided by suppose this distance is 2 km 2 km and the time is 1 hour then distance by time is equal to 2 km divided by 1 hour which is equal to 2 km per hour okay that is how you can get this graph how you can use this graph for getting the speed okay okay so this is a particular distance time graph of two object which one is moving fast which one is moving fast object a or object b object a or b all of you please listen here this is the 1 minute 2 3 4 5 suppose this is 1 km 2 km 3 km 4 km 5 km okay so here in 1 minute it travels this much in 2 minute it travels 2 km in 3 minute it travels about 3.5 km 3.2 km okay and when 4 minute it travels 4 km okay that means it is in a state of uniform motion okay so in 4 km it travels 4 minute it travels 4 km but look at this graph in 4 minute it travels only 2 km in 4 minute it travels only 2 km which means 4 minute 2 km or 4 minute 4 km which one is faster 4 minute 4 km is faster right so here a is the object that is moving fast a is the object that is moving fast so hope you all understand what you are discussed today so that is the whole thing that you have learned the distance moved object in a unit time is called a speed speed of the object help us to decide which one is moving faster than the other The speed of an object is the distance traveled divided by the time taken to cover the distance. The basic unit is meter per second. Periodic events are used for the measurement of time. Periodic motion of pendulum has been used to make clocks and watches. Motion of object can be represented in pictorial form by their distance time graph. The distance time graph for motion of an object moving at a constant speed is a straight line. So hope you all understand. Hope you all doing good. Hope you all will study hard. so that's all about this chapter uh, let's see another one session thank you all thank you study hard